Hello, my name is Rand Silva. We are here to build our very first neural network. Of course, we all know what neural networks can do. They can recognize images in the picture. They can recognize human speech, as in this example. Hey Google, what's the weather like tonight? The forecast tonight for Blackburn is 22 with a thunderstorm. Currently it's 23 with showers. Okay, Google, thank you. I'm here to help. <laughs> see, as you can see, they can diagnose illnesses, sometimes better than specialists. They can identify spam in emails. They can even drive cars. Well, we're not going to start right there. What we're going to do tonight is what we call the hello world of uh, neural networks. Desculpa interromper nossa programação. Eu fiz esta apresentação em inglês, porque inglês é a língua do Udacity e inglês é a língua da Austrália onde eu moro. É claro que eu poderia ter feito a apresentação também em português brasileiro. We will build a neural network that will recognize digits from a, a public database. That database is called NIST. NIST was built by the National Institute of Standards and Technology in the 80s and it's been around for quite a long time. It's been used by uh, students, the researchers, everyone around the world to learn the basics of neural networks. And why not? That's our first tool. So let's get started. So now what we gotta do is start our Jupyter Notebook. We do that by typing Jupyter Notebook and it will start. So what we have now is Jupyter and what we have to do is select our notebook which in our case is minist.ipynb and that notebook starts. As soon as the notebook starts, the very first thing we gotta do is to load the minist dataset. With care as that's very very simple. All we really have to do is to ensure that we are importing a library carries.datasets, importing the minist object from that dataset, and uh, that we run minist.load underscore data. And that's going to do two things. The first one is to ensure that we are running TensorFlow in the back end. And that's great because that's how I set it up. The second one is to bring the data set down from AWS and load it into the notebook. And that's what it's done now. So what have you downloaded? Let's have a look. So when I run the next cell, I can see the labels for the first six records. So the, these are 5, 0, 4, 1, 9, and 2. Now, running the next cell, I will see the images for those records. So you can see that 5 represents 5, 0 represents 0, 4, and so on. So these are the labels for my training data. We have managed to load some training data, training and test data. That will be very useful. We managed to load some label data, which is very important to any neural network. But so far, all we've done was we've downloaded some data. Now, that's when things start to be exciting. This cell is what's exciting about what we're about to do. It contains the definition of our neural network. It contains two layers, one with 512 fully connected nodes with activation ReLU and input shape of 28 times 28. The second layer contains activation function softmax and 10 nodes. It will give us the distribution of probability that each one of the digits from 0 to 9 are represented by the data that we have input. Let's run it now and that will create the model. So far so good. So what we are about to do now is to further define the model. We are defining an optimizer of RSProp and a loss of categorical cross-entropy. Well, categorical cross-entropy is the loss that we have to use when we have to use a multi-class classification. So now we have defined our neural network. So we have loaded the data, we have defined our model. Are we there yet? Are we ready to go? Well, not quite there. There are a few problems that we still need to address. Uh, on the input data, there are two problems. One is, we need to make sure that the shape of our training data is exactly the shape that we have defined in our model. That's problem number one. Problem number two is our input data is pixels that go 
from 0 to 220, 255. We need to make sure that that data is within the range of 0 to 1 or minus 1 to 1, which is where neural networks like to operate. That's where they operate the best. So that is what we have to do with our input data. That's easy. We know exactly what to do. The other problem is the label data. The labels that we have are now from 0 to 9. Well, again, our input, our output needs to be 0 or 1. So what we're going to do is to do one hot encoding of the label data. That too is a very simple task when we're using Keras. So with this cell, we will address the problems I was talking about. First of all, is to ensure that our import data is in the right shape. And we do that by using the function reshape. And we also ensure that it is a float 32, which is the right type that we need to use in the input data for Keras, and we divide that by 255, so the resulting number is between 0 and 1. We do that with the two uh, arrays, the train images and the test images, and that's what we are just going to do. Fine, that one is resolved. And now, remember that I said that one hot encoding in Keras is a very simple task? Well, all we have to do really is to use the two categorical function. So the two categorical function is fantastic. What it does is it turns our training labels and creates one category per individual value of that. So let's run that too and now we have transformed. So as you can see um, I had the first record the first training label was 5, and initially it was that 5, so it now has turned into a list where the fifth digit, or 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, is now a 1. Therefore, this is one hot encoded. So are we ready to start? Yes, now we are. Now we're going to be doing backpropagation. That's what's going to happen. The model is going to initialize itself with random weights and then it's going to calculate its uh, prediction and then it's going to compare those predictions for the training data with uh, the actual labels and it's going to calculate a loss. With that loss, it's going to use our gradient descent to determine what the next set of weights will be and it will go back and forth, back and forth until it eventually converges. You will notice that this model is going to converge very quickly because this data is very much lab condition. It's same size and shape, uh, numbers are isolated, there's nothing else, there's no noise in the data and you see it will converge quickly. I'm going to run it for five epochs, no more than that and you see the errors going down very quickly and the accuracy going up very quickly too. In real life real cases out there, you will find that some models will take a long time to run. Sometimes hours, sometimes weeks, sometimes it's going to take clusters of GPUs to run a model quickly. In our case, a few seconds. Let's get started. So let's fit the model. You will notice that it's going to run and converge very quickly. As you can see, the loss is going down very quickly and the accuracy is going up very quickly. This is lab condition. It's not a lot of fun to watch this when you have real models, big models with a lot of data, a training data and a lot of categories. But in this case, I think uh, we have time to watch. And one more epoch and you see the convergence going up very quickly. Yes, so 98%. Now, this was on the training data. Now, what happens when we run this model with test data that we haven't actually used in the model? Data that the model hasn't actually seen. So let's see what our prediction will be. So you see, it's a very, very low loss and very high accuracy. So we have built a model that can predict handwritten numbers with 98% accuracy. Pretty good for the first effort, huh? 
98% for your very first model. That's not a bad effort. I hope you have enjoyed this session as much as I have. You know where to reach me.